when there's a lack of emotional safety, how do you talk about what is needed when this is the case? It's what all human hearts need in order to take a risk to be vulnerable. It's inhumane to ask a human to be vulnerable if they don't feel safe. What is the feeling in your heart? Do you feel like it's safe to open up? Do you feel safe to share your experience of the heart of the matter? And that's my gauge. I use the heart of the matter I use in your heart because I don't want it to be, and it can't be a cognitive decision. It's not a cognitive assessment about safety. It's an emotional experience in the present moment. Do you feel safe to be you? When that's not the client's experience, we work to do all we can to build safety. And sometimes the first way to start building safety is to process what blocks safety unprocessed pain. So my heart is full of pain and that blocks me from opening my heart to even gauge my sense of safety. Something the partner said to me 10 years ago, their affair. In the conversation about what blocks safety, you get a sense of where you're going to need to go treatment wise. So if there's a sense of a lack of safety, you need to do pre-EFT. I don't want people to think they have to go all the way back and not start EFT because processing people's unprocessed pain is what EFT is so good at. When there is a question about the felt sense of safety, it's really important to slow down and to wonder, when was the last time you felt safe? What blocks your heart from opening? How hard is your heart? Okay, that it's, makes sense it's to It's a me. message to pause and slow down. If there's a lack of safety, you don't push on the gas to yeah. proceed. You slow way down. Those are almost, you tell me if this is right, assessment questions about what blocks your heart. When did this block come up? How thick is that block? How does that lack of safety play out in the space between them? You know, I want to know what's contributing to that lack of safety. We have no business asking our clients to be vulnerable. We have no business evoking their vulnerabilities if we aren't reasonably sure that they're safe enough to be vulnerable. I think a lot of us, when we think about safety, we think about contraindications. Let's say you slow down, you start to understand mm-hmm. that the block might be a, a contraindication. So there's not enough safety. We can't sort of do repair when it's still happening. Mm-hmm. How do you without, talk about that with your clients without shaming them? I am as gentle, but clear as I can possibly be. And I say things, I, I heard myself say it last night in my office. I know you're a good person. You have a good heart. All of us make mistakes. All of us have regrets. All of us have stuff that we impact our loved ones with. And yet, while this is still happening or why this is still ambiguous, I have no business taking your time and money to work on your relationship yet. I'd like to. I think I can be helpful. But timing is everything is very important in this process. And as Steve Porges says, safety is the preamble to attachment. I need to be really clear with them on the importance of safety and what a limiter it is not to have safety. I love that. Safety is the preamble to attachment. So going back to your question about the contraindications and how I said they're they're related, they're two sides of the same coin. It's not always a direct relationship. We don't believe that non-safety comes because one of the contraindications is happening. Although that might be a reason for the non-safety. So that's where your assessment questions. That's great. It's a Venn right. diagram. <laughs> it's a Venn diagram, right. They're related, but not necessarily always directly. It's important for us to slow down and to be repetitive about them as needed and to then explore emotional safety. And how does it feel to answer these questions in the moment? That's when we're looking at any differences between the initial session with both partners in the room versus the presentation of either partner in the individual sessions. Mm -hmm. You know how when they're both there, people feel like they've got to be really careful and they can't say the wrong thing. And then they come in on their own and they're like a whole new person. That contrast or that incongruence slows me down. Mm -hmm. And I might even say in the individual session, so help me understand, I experienced you so differently when you came with your partner last week. And sometimes they say, oh, I was, I had a cold or I had the night shift the night before and I didn't sleep. Fair enough. Yeah. But sometimes they'll say, oh, there's no way I can be myself with him or her in the room. And that's, of course, when you go in and explore more. And if need be, ask for a second individual session to Mm -hmm. give yourself the time to slow way down. That's what we mean by pause and consider the need for pre-EFT. Slow way down 
to build enough rapport with the person individually to explore their places of non-safety. Safety isn't about the absence of fear. I mean, I'm not expecting clients to not be scared. Couples come in with fear regardless. Lots of couples are going to have a lack of safety. And so you're yeah. going to say pre-EFT and yeah. pre-EFT means slowing down. Some percentage out of those pre-EFTers are going to have a contraindication. Mm-hmm. And that's when you might pause the process and recommend individual therapy. You just have to really understand the landscape and slow down and do one to two individual sessions and really yeah. get the lay of the land. Yeah, that's a lovely reflection. And and what non-safety does to a human is make them defensive. Yeah. And sometimes with supervisees, they'll say, I can't get this client under his defenses. Sometimes I say, well, maybe this is going way back, but do you think he feels safe coming into session? Have you asked him about it? Again, it's not safety in the contraindication way. It's the emotional safety needed to open up. That's so clear and makes so much sense and really helpful. For more hot tips on emotionally focused therapy, go to theeftcafe.com and sign up for our newsletter where you will receive short little clips like the one you just watched.